everyone. My name is Gio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from the top eight of the Dathomir Galactic Championship Qualifier. Super excited to be here. We have a First Order versus Empire match, and if you are a fan of the Gold Squadron Podcast, which we record live on Mondays here on our Twitch channel and goes out, of course, on all the podcast places, you will see that uh, not only was I correct in my prediction that an aggressor would make the top Top 32, but we have Philippe Vucic here on the right side, bringing Thai aggressors to the top eight. So you know I'm excited uh, for for my prediction being not just right, but extra right. But let me let me not go too far. Let's go ahead and bring in some friends here um, for all of our Galactic Championship qualifiers. We're teaming up with content creators from around the community, and this one we have a Firestorm Squadron Fire cast community team up how's it going guys yeah not too bad Dion. thanks for asking how you doing myself i'm feeling great yep it's going really well and we're really happy to be back with you again today awesome uh, yeah, tell, tell the people your names so that they know who you are so of course i'm phil a better known as Ponscom. and i am dom all right, fantastic. And, uh, yeah, no, so very interesting to see. We got the aggressors back after we commented on them yesterday, though, Dion. Th that's right. right. Deja vu, deja vu. Well, let's indeed. go ahead and uh, have you guys break down these lists. Uh, indeed. So I'm going to break down the aggressors since I did them yesterday, of course. So you, as you say, got Philippe uh, Vujic, who has got the Sidar Specialist and Captain Ferroff. So that is the aggressors will with Dawson Turret, and you have Captain Ferroff with Ruthless Admiral Stone and a Hull Upgrade. And we've also got his opponent, Mario, who's got First Order into the top eight, which is great to see, with Hollow with Proud Tradition, and three of the Sinar Janus Engineers, which is really nice to see them in there as well. Yeah, no, multiple um, silences. Uh, we saw a few of at the UK Open back in what feels like another lifetime ago in February, but uh, I haven't really seen this particular version before using Hollow along with... Um, Sinar Engineers. I've seen other versions where you use um, Rage of Von Reg or maybe Ember along with a couple, but this is really cool to see. Yeah, and the uh, silencers and the generic silencers getting a bit of a decrease in the last points, so you can fit a little bit more in the list. And um, yeah, it's 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 just a, it's a nice solid list with a lot of very maneuverable ships. Yep. Uh, somebody asking about the point total on the uh, on the FO list. It is 199 points, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oops, I accidentally left the Firestorm Squadron <laughs> logo up there. All right, cool. So, wh who do you think has the advantage in this matchup? By the way, choose your champion. I think is open for maybe one more minute. Actually, false. I will open it w again because we did uh, have a little bit of a slow start. We'll open it for a minute. What do you guys think? Phil? I mean, personally, I think the aggressors may have this, and I'm saying it purely based on time on target. We saw that yesterday uh, in the Sloan off that we commented on. I mean, the difference in this particular game is the um, engineers all have that, have two shields. They've got a little bit more maneuverability. They can um, double reposition if need be, so they are a little bit more slippery, but I do think with the Sloan rerolls, with um, the time on target, with the dorsal turrets, I think the aggressors may just have it. Yeah, I think um, it's it's an interesting one. My my heart is definitely with the aggressors. I'd, I'd I'd like to see them do well. I really would. But the this first order list has got a lot of uh, a lot of staying power and a decent amount of firepower. And if Mario can get the positions and get the engagement he wants, then uh, it's a decent chance of taking that Reaper down fairly quickly. And I think the aggressors, without the Sloan triggers and without that backup support may struggle to deal the damage needed against these three agility ships. Yeah, the three agility ships definitely is going to be something that uh, that Philippe's going to have to worry about. But one of the interesting things is the fact that the silencers love stressing themselves, right? They, they have that double reposition capability. So giving the rerolls to the aggressors is something that I think Mario's going to have to worry about. Yeah, he's definitely yes. going to have to be cautious about when he utilizes those reposition options and try to try to make them count. Try to try to stress himself only when he's going to be able to get the blocks in. So even though they will have a reroll, it will still only be single modded shots. 
yeah, either that or, or at times he can know he's not going to get shot. So if he can get out of arc and you know knows that the double reposition will stop that from happening, then I think he'll want to, to do it then. But it's a case of, uh, I do think that he's going to be a little bit cautious. Uh, I think he may try and come round the top of the board and come back through, knowing that um, the uh, silencers especially a, a lot more maneuverable than the... Uh, aggressors, and uh, I think he might try and get round the back, try and get to Captain Farrell and take him out as quickly as possible. Yeah, well, one thing that I think uh, is really nice to see from Mario as well is he knows the um, not limitations, but the the added uh, the added complexity of things to think about with Hollow's ability of having to pass tokens away. So what he's done right at the start is lock Hollow with all three of those tie silencers. Uh, which gives them the options for him to pass those those superfluous locks around instead of having to take away a key token that he needs at a time. Yeah, yeah, and no, I completely agree. It's, an, it's a very smart move, and of course, um, he's probably got a lot of practice into getting it done because you know that, um, yeah, that, that is the limitation of Hollow. Uh, I'm also interested to see how Proud Tradition will work in the game because I've played with it a couple of times, but nothing major because I, I don't get a lot of use out of it myself but i'm interested to see what you guys think about using power tradition sorry one second i'm fixing fixing something on the table the uh the arcs were floating <laughs> yeah when uh just just a little little uh tabletop simulator uh uh, pro tip: When you're um, when you are setting up your ships, don't lock your turret arcs because they they do this weird thing that as they move they start floating to the to the ceiling. Um, yeah, the pro tradition is going to be definitely an interesting uh, move because, like you said, while the um, hollow can get that that. Uh, that free focus token after doing a red maneuver, uh, the stress is always worrisome. And all, additionally, Hollow's ability to pass around these tokens, uh, while you start with those three target locks from your your buddies and you're able to pass those off and uh, use, use that beneficially so that you don't have to give away beneficial tokens, it will be interesting to see the target priority that goes out as uh, as Mario starts to maybe take strain or depletes and pass those to the generic silencers. Yeah, for sure. Ah, there's a, just something in the chat there. Gambler Tuber wonders if Curl Poor Creative will team up with TTS at some point to try and get some digital templates going, which could be some interesting future prize support for online events. It's something, I will tell you that it's not impossible. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and also, yeah. I have something cooking for Coruscant. Let me just put it that way. Uh, that's all I get. That's all I'm gonna say. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Ooh, you managed to get something out of D on there, chat. It's uh, you, you did, yeah, you did. Serious. I was like, oh man, Wait, you're, you're gonna make me say it. Why are you gonna make me say it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the chat's always hungry for more. You know that by now. <laughs> this, it's true. It is. It is. And we so, can see hear Dion's point earlier about the Sinars um, stressing themselves. These aggressors here are taking their barrel actions, foregoing having a focus mod because they got that reroll from the Sinar being stressed, making mm -hmm. sure he's got some shots early here. That's right. It's important to note, though, that the side arc, the Doral Satorid, is only range 1 to 2. So um, that's to w just make sure anybody who might not be aware of that, these turret arcs are from a special weapon not a primary so they only reach out to range two but i do think that red silencer is going to get shot uh, at least one time at least yeah i think green i think blue potentially are in range i don't think yellow is um out of the uh, aggressors and definitely not red uh, orange or captain Faroff. um but in terms of wind condition here of course you you know what you want to do early on you know roughly what your plan a plan b and plan c will be um i think Person at the moment, I do think that um, Mario's objective is to kill Faroff, get rid of that slow reroll, then pick apart uh, the aggressors. But uh, what do you guys think would be the win condition uh, for Philippe here? I think um, I think Philippe uh, is. I, th I think he's going to take the target of opportunity, whatever comes his way, with these really maneuverable ships uh, and his 
not as quite maneuverable aggressors. They've got the barrel option, but they don't have the boost and they can't double reposition. He's going to have to pick his target of opportunity. And, I mean, Hollow would be ideal to get rid of that token sharing. And because uh, you can see here, Hollow's passing an evade to try and make these silences a bit tankier against any incoming shots. And that utility is, is, is key to try and survive, I think. Yeah, it'll be interesting yeah, to see yeah. the the how Hollow could end up also being more of a support ship than an offensive uh, powerhouse in the matchup. It's always a, a role role reversal that can be in uh, in this type of list. All right, here we go. We got our first shots. The green aggressor is taking a range three shot. The, that silencer does have focus evade. The dice box is on. Excellent. And yeah, let's check inside out. Let's see if the dorsal turret um, was in range, and I think uh, they just decided it is. All right, we'll have the players roll here, and that's our, our first forgetting uh, of the of the box. I'm sure they'll slide it on over in a second. There it is. Okay. Hit crit. Would have been the same result. He had folk. And all right. Sp it's going to be taking a shield there. We know what Pinky Flink Dice can do. We know how easy it is to chip away. Yeah, and any damage that he can get at this stage is is just a bonus. Oh, yeah, completely agree. And one of the things I noticed with people who play Where silencers is the fact that a lot of times when you have those shields, you're willing to play a little more aggressive. As you start to lose the shields, you start getting a little bit worried, right? You have your hole exposed, and uh, those three agility start to feel a little less invincible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's one of those things when it comes down to... Um, Again, it's a similar thing with first world TIE fighters versus um, Imperial TIE fighters. Is that one shield does make you uh, take a few extra risks you may not usually take purely because you know you have that little bit of a safety net. Um, yeah, we all know three three agility with mods. Um, you know, two dice guns are not the easiest things in the world to plank things through. But when stuff does start finally getting through, once it does go into that hole, things can go wrong quickly. So as you say, yeah, they can be a bit more aggressive at the start. But as soon as those hold, um, so those, those shields go you tend to bug out a little bit and kind of be able to play a little bit more conservatively. So I think it's important uh, for Mario's side that he puts the damage in before that starts happening. Because again, as soon as those dorsal sort of turrets start getting ranged and start getting those consistent hits in with the rerolls, with those, you know, he's really got to be careful because as soon as those shields are gone, we know that signs of can burn down pretty easily if Philippe um, is able to set up a kill box. And as we saw yesterday in his game, he's a, and from what I've seen from in person, he's very, very capable of setting up a kill box that you don't see coming. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. One of the things that a couple people are asking in the chat is whether or not Mario is going to be willing to turn the silencers in here. I mean, I think that's risky, but of course, being initiative one, they do have the capability to block. But um, we did see Philippe do a pretty good job during the last stream match of uh, of avoiding blocks where where he needed to and using the dorsal turret to its advantage and uh, making making the from from that game that we had making the person trying to block pay by having that dorsal turret on and getting some damage that way. Yeah, I think. Um... I think Mario was expecting to have a bit more time before they engaged as well. These these aggressors can can come quite quickly, and they they've got some big maneuvers plus that barrel uh, to try and catch up with ships. All yeah. right, and there's I, the three straight. Mario wants to turn in just yet. Mm. And yeah, you 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 called it right there, Phil. He's uh, he's going towards that right hand corner. We probably see a boost. Heading towards down uh, the bottom, maybe trying to set up that silencer on the flank, and there it is. Yeah. And he wants to try and get, get in the back, get him through to, to Faroff. I'm not sure what um, the other silencer do. I think um, Hollow's going to follow suit. Um, but I do think that uh, Green, this one's now just turned in, I think is in a pretty precarious position. But I do wonder what he's going to try and do to kind of get that. Maybe he'll do a boost forward to try and. Uh, get some blocks in, but he knows that stress will be there, which knows slowing will trigger for the reroll. So this uh, engagement's really not going to be favorable for him to try and boost the blocks here. 
I wonder if he, he stays there and maybe gets hollow in a position to give him an evade and give him a better chance of surviving the upcoming onslaught. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I think it's a very valid option. I think that might, might be something he does. And here we go, bringing the yellow Sinar 3 bank. That's going to be sitting at range 1. Takes a focus. The movement of the ship's really going to matter. There's a couple of bump possibilities. And there's the first one. Three bank does bump. We'll have a shot on the yellow silencer, though. Next three bank. Taking a focus. Continuing the conga line. Three banks are slapping a focus. And the brown one should land right next to it. Or orange, excuse me. Clickety, clickety, clackety. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I thought it was Lab's keyboard. I forget that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. And uh, we should have the silent, excuse me, not the silencer, the Reaper coming up next. Probably deciding on where he wants to put that ailerons. Going forward, looking at the space, likely to bump and does. And is set there. Not surprised to see Hollow turn right. Want to see what the action is. Yeah, I do wonder if he's thinking about trying to get that evade and pass it off like you were thinking, Dion. Mm hmm. I think that the the waffle here is I can. He's probably thinking I can get a target lock for my own shot. But do I take a deplete and or a strain, and do I pass it off to somebody? I think you take the deplete, and you actually hold on to it. Keep hollow plinky with the two dice. You have a mod there. Try to strip one of the focuses, or actually just keep going to green if you can. Yeah. He's also got the option, if red is in range, that he can... And red's going to be out of range significantly. But uh, if Red was a bit closer, he could have passed the deplete off to the ship that wasn't going to get a shot this turn. Mm hmm. So, Which decided is a nice for target lock. Those options. Yeah. And he's taking it on green. So, it looks like yeah, he's I planning on he focus firing those two. But he hasn't quite got the range. Yeah, so I think he was uh, umming and ahhing about whether he wanted to pass um, to, to take it on blue, where all three of his ships could shoot the same target, mm -hmm. or take it on green, which doesn't have the defensive mod. And he, he's gone for the ship that doesn't have the defensive mod in the end. And are we just going to end up... Target lock here. <laughs> yeah. Also probably just debating what he wants to do. Does he actually want to pass the depletes or does he want to just break one of the locks? All right, so he's passing the deplete to green because he will still get a three die shot, which is better than uh, better than nothing. Yeah. And here we go. Hollow range two into the green silencer. This is going to be a three on two shot. Fully modified potentially for Hollow. I doubt that he'd probably spend the focus. Doesn't even have to worry about it. Three he hits. Need it. And two evades uh, not showing up there. Those are blanks, friends. And that silencer is all. Oh, sorry, silencer. All these S names. All oh, this Sinar <laughs> specialist is already down to two hole. Fair off, taking the range, two shot into the silencer. One crit. That's the average there. Didn't have any mods available. Actually going to use Ruthless. That That is quite That's uh, an great. aggressive play. Yeah. Hmm. I find that to be really aggressive this early. Yeah. He's going to yeah. take... Uh, yeah, he's going to put a damage on yellow in order to change one of the results to a hit. For hit crit. And Natty's out. 
Yeah, there's the danger of of ruthless. You can't guarantee what your opponent's going to roll on the defensive side. But you, want, he, I think he's just trying to push as much damage as possible to try and eliminate the silencer before it gets to shoot. Yep. Something that the chat has mentioned that instead of taking the uh, deplete token on Hollow, they think uh, a strain token and passing it to yellow with uh, the green silencer being the more obvious target might have been a better choice. All right, here we go. We got two hits going into the yellow silencer. No damage. Got the two evades. And silencer's continuing here. Sorry. Oh, my Jesus Christ. Okay, come on, Dion. Wake up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm getting upset with I'm getting upset with myself because I'm I'm talking dumb. Uh, range one into the silencer. Hit crit. Safe. He spent that focus, but these silencers are getting some consistent two dice, and he has mm -hmm. not been able to strip that focus token yet. That that's one of the things we talk about with having three agility. It can uh, really start to snowball when you continuously get two evades on those three dice, and he still hasn't had to spend the focus, which is absolutely huge. All right, well th we we're gonna get our first damage here on that silencer. Is he gonna spend the focus? Or is he just going to take the two? He might just take the shields. That's a tough choice. He's looking at how many shots he's got coming in. He still has two other shots coming in from red and orange, I believe. And yeah, I think he, I think he, he spends, spends it. it. Yeah, he spends it, yeah. Uh, note he's not fertigating Sloan. That is a strain token out there on the silencer, not a stress token. I know it's kind of hard to see the difference between those red stroke. Uh, right, sorry, not a strain, a deplete token. It's the deplete token that was passed by Hollow. All right, I'm standing up officially. I'm not, not sitting down anymore. <laughs> Brain's turning off. All right, two hits, and there it is again. No evades. Two more damage. And that's a first card, and that's going to be half points on the green silencer. Still got one more shot to come in as well. Last one, range two, two dice, and only going to end up with one hit here after spending the focus. That one's safe. I think Fleet was hoping for a little bit more damage here, but as we're saying, two dice guns versus three agility doesn't always yield... Um, the best source, especially as you say, when they start rolling those double double of age every single time, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing that's uh, more frustrating. Uh, and using ruthless was, yeah, probably a good call, but it didn't pay off in the end for this particular round. And here we go. Looks like the green silencer has chosen to go into the Sloan carrier, Captain Fairoff. I mean, that is the most dangerous piece on the board. So, absolutely correct call. And Fairoff not having. All right, and that automatically turns into an evade because of Captain Fairoff's ability. And thank, thank you to our friend putting the card there as a reminder. Auto evade. This is a tough uh, choice because you, usually you want to you want to take a ship off the board. That, that's that's almost your always go to here. But, of course, with Sloan being on the board, if he takes that, that silence is going to be double-stressed. No real out for next turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and could be in trouble. And that's two hits. Spends a focus for three. Yeah, so the silence to go off to yellow here instead of going off to green. Yep. I mean, he has no tokens there. He rolled one of A. That's going to be two damage. I know he did go for green. Oh, oh, it wasn't green. Sorry, I thought I saw the tap on yellow. Yeah, same. Same. That's my bad. Yeah. No, I, I agree. But no, it, it's gone into green. And uh, that's a dead green. Yeah, being able to get a shop, ship off the table, absolutely huge. And there is the Sloan double stress. Mind you, the silencer does have a pretty good, mm. uh, good dial, but it is going to be stressed next turn no matter what. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing with Sloan. It's a, well done, you killed a ship, now I'm a panic pilot, essentially. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I want to answer but a question it, for somebody here in the chat who who might be a, a, uh, a newer... Sorry. sorry, real quick, Dom. Um, uh, answering a question here for somebody who might be a newer player. So somebody asked, why would the first ship have uh, 
fire at Captain Faroff. So Captain Faroff uh, is carrying the biggest tech in Philippe's squad, and that's Admiral Sloan. So Admiral Sloan makes it so that when an enemy ship uh, destroys one of yours, your ships gain double stress, and then the friendly ships to Sloan have rerolls against any ships that are stressed. So that's just a really powerful ability. And being able to get Captain Faroff off the table as early as possible, uh, with the potential there, I know that no damage happened, but with the potential of getting her off the table, um, you really start to hurt all of these lower initiative, weaker ships because now they're losing modifiers and they're losing a major threat out there. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's also one of those things where she's a deterrent as well. But you don't want to... As you were saying, you don't want to kill one of these lower initiative ships until you've got something off the board because of that double stress. Um, I do think now it's going to be interesting to see what um, Mario does in this particular turn. Because I think that Red will come in through the gap between the de Debris cars there. I think Hollow and Yellow are just going to rock up and try not to get... Uh, I think Yellow might go for blocks. And Hollow's just going to try and come up and go into Feroff. Uh, Green's the only one I'm not quite sure about what he's going to do with. May just, just do a, um, a bank and sit there. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but what do you guys think about what Mario or Philippe's going to do for this turn? So I th I'm thinking that Mario is definitely going to try and block up the space that those uh, aggressors want to be in using that stress silencer. And uh, having thought about it a bit, actually doing the damage, killing the aggressor, whilst he's got that double stress, this is the full health silencer, so the other two are taking damage. And if you take shots away from damaged ships to try and split the fire of the aggressors because he is stressed, that's a bonus for him. Mm -hmm. And if you can definitely get one of those ships blocked, try and create some bumps, again, reduce the mods that those ships are going to have, uh, it puts him in a good position with the red silencer coming in from the side because he's got a one hard boost uh, focus option available. And uh, Hollow there as well, being able to uh, get in on the action. Hey, guys, I'm going to step away for one second. I'll be right back. Take the wheel. Sure thing. Leaving us with the uh, reprobates again, Dom, I can see. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm interested to see what Philippe does here in terms of those aggressors. Um, he's down to four, obviously. Uh, but I think, considering the dark, considering the stones, I think yellow may just do a one bank to the left. I think that red may do a one forward. Blue and orange, again, I'm not quite sure. They may try just try and get the arcs on hollow, I think, is what they might aim for. Yeah, so he's coming with green again to be a block and a nuisance. I think yellow is also going to be coming in to try and be a block and a nuisance. Uh, to try and, I think, also give hollow that option. So if he can block up that space with the silencers, it means hollow is less likely to get blocked. And hollow, of course, is the more important piece of the first order here to be able to pass out those tokens. Yeah, precisely. Because especially, so... let me just double check hollow's ability is. Because, of course, Hollow is just transferring a token. So, because he's transferring a token, even though that yellow silencer is stressed, he can still receive a token. So, if Hollow's not going to get shot, he can pass a focus or an evade to that yellow silencer and yeah. give it a bit more health and, uh, well, not health, but uh, uh, some mods to help protect it. Yeah, of course, because it's not performing an action. It's literally just passing a token over. Um, so, unlike things like, for example, the... Um, the N1 or the Defender, where you have to fully execute maneuver, then you get to perform an action. This is just passing a token over. It's the same with uh, things like targeting computer RE to acquire locks and things. It's a way around um, stress. And with Hollow being Hollow, it's a, it's a good way. And with this particular um, matchup, he's wanting to try and take, you know, he may want to pass that stress to someone else so that they won't get the rerolls on Hollow. Um, I, I do like the sloop here from Feroff, though. I mean, you've played um, the Reaper and, of course, the uh, Striker a hell of a lot more than I have. I have played them both, um, but you are much more versed in doing ailerons and things like that. So what do you think of uh, his choice here? I, th I think Feroff's choice here has been quite sensible. It's, it's one of the only places he could have been to almost guarantee that he's not going to get blocked. And he is far enough away that the red silencer probably uh, won't have a shot. Mm. 
Green, of course, is facing the wrong way. Also, Hollow may not have range to have a shot. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. And that's, that, that's what he wants. He wants to keep Faroth um, as far away from guns as possible, but whilst also staying in that not 3 range to give the rerolls. Yep. And just, just... He'll have everyone, he'll have all the aggressors in range here by, by a comfortable margin. Uh, I do also wonder if the Yellow Silencer now doesn't have Arc on him either. Uh, he may not. Just to keep the, the chat up to date, it seems that Mario um, forgot to set Hollow's dial. So I think they're just having a judge try and um, help out and work out what they've got to be doing. Okay, so the, he, he set the dial, but he didn't click the set button. Um, so it's similar to... Yeah, he, he set the dial, but it's, it's what will TTS do about that? I'm not quite sure. I know we've got... Um, Judges available. Yeah, D is is on top of it. Looks like he's in the right. in the channel right now. Cool. Well, whilst I'm sorting out the um, hollows dial here in, in terms of his maneuver, um, I I think at the moment personally, I think that um, Philippe has the upper hand here. I think he's got the blocks. So the ruling is white two forward. Okay, so it's similar to if you have set a uh, red maneuver, uh, so set an illegal maneuver that you can't do. So if you set a red maneuver whilst you're strapped, for, for example, they've gone with that as their option. So two forward for hollow, yeah, which puts him in a lot of arcs and a lot of potential incoming shots from those aggressors. Oh yeah, now this is completely the worst place for the Hollow to be at this point. I mean, uh, he's, he's got guns on target with mods, and Hollow is sat there pretty, pretty naked. Though. He has no defensive mods, he has no focus, so can evade him. Um, wow. Yep, this is a bad place for Hollow to be. He's going to be able to pass that stress off to someone. He's going to have to. Um, That's a deplete. Pass, a deplete. Sorry, I think you may pass that on to Green, because Green has no shot. Yeah, green having no shot, you, you give him that deplete token and he can do a blue maneuver next turn to clear it. Yeah. Or he does uh, a talon roll or some turnaround maneuver uh, and keeps the deplete, which is not the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I think that'd be the safest maneuver here. Um, just to the deplete, pass off to the green, because yeah, green has no shot, he's not going to be able to threaten anyone, does the blue maneuver, clears it, absolutely fine. Um, all right, Big Daddy's I back. I like the red is and the others. That's right, we didn't, uh, we didn't burn the place down, down, so you're all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, looks like uh, we didn't have any engagement. It looks like we just got to it, right? Hollow moving now. Yeah, we had a little bit of excitement where Mario had accidentally forgotten to set Hollow's dial. So uh, D, D jumped in just to, just to help him out with the ruling, uh, mm -hmm. which is why it's taken a little bit longer to get to the engagement. Yep, two white forward, I believe, is the ruling there. Yeah, that's yes, what they've gone yes. with. Got it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Pew Let's pews. Let's go ahead. Hollow is choosing a target now. Has blue at range one as a possible target. The blue aggressor, I believe, is full. Uh, and that is the plan. Taking that range one shot. Four dice. One hit. Has the lock. And there we go. Two hits. After the lock. Aggressor is going to avoid one of the shots. It's just going to be a shield. First damage onto that aggressor. Yeah, very sensibly not spending the focus token there. And as we had discussed, he has passed that deplete token off to green to keep the firepower he's got in this engagement as full strength as it can be. Yeah, and I will say one of the things about the two white forward, it could have been worse. Luckily, Hollow has the ability to get rid of, uh, you know, bad tokens. So uh, not not too bad of a situation. Fair off here, dealing one hit there after the roll, using the Sloan reroll for two It looks like he's ruthless in as well. 
to take that to three. Yeah, let's try as much damage nice. as he can. All right, aggressive play here, and those are no evades there. I believe this was into the yellow aggressor sitting there at range three. So it's going to be shield, shield, and a card. We got half points on another silencer, uh, bringing the score now 28 to 48, uh, starting to extend the lead for Philippe. And all of those aggressors can shoot yellow, with green being the uh, silencer that blocked this turn. Yep, we'll have a, a Sloan re-roll here. And just one hit. Again, no mods on these defense dice. Uh, got the evade. Another range one shot here. Three dice. Nothing there. Reroll from Sloan. Not getting what he's looking for mm -hmm. here. So I know that uh, he didn't doesn't quite too much bumping with these aggressors but not having the modifications of the focus can hurt for sure oh yeah for sure i mean we saw that it's paint, hit crit it's crit Ooh. that uh that could hurt that aggressor unless he gets natties and that aggressor is taken off the table it still has it's one so shot cool. left in uh of those aggressors i believe the orange one has not taken a shot yet yeah, yeah it's just one signs are down th uh two to go All right, there's the Fs in the chat for our, our, our first dead silencer. 28 to 72. Next shot. Another hit crit crit going into the a green aggressor. Has to spend a focus on that silencer in order to avoid some of the damage. Still taking hit crit. And... Yeah, shields were right down. Good. This could hurt. Yep. A double damage yeah. would kill it. It's taking it down to at least one hull. Yes, I did mean the silencer. Misspoke. <laughs> I'm drinking my coffee right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a weapons failure. Ooh, okay. That could end up being relevant at some point. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Especially it's when he's good. already got the deplete token that's passed in from Hollow. So he's oh, really yeah. looking to clear that. Yeah. Sorry, there's eight ships on the board with uh, Slaynor in the name. It can be a little bit confusing at times. <laughs> <laughs> sign out what? Sign out what? where? Yeah, I think I think uh, Philippe's going to go into uh, to orange here potentially. I think and then both the uh, no red red lost the shield, so I think you may go into red actually. Mm -hmm. It's got the yeah, range, but... it's range three shot, but you go into red. Yeah, both awesome. blue and red blue are as well. down at the moment. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, think yeah, probably... This one as well. Yep. I mean, he doesn't have any other follow-up shots, so it's just whichever whichever one you want that you think you could have shots on in an additional turn is probably where you go. It's going to take blue. Range 3 has 3 dice, has the focus, will spend for 2. And took a shield... Uh, sorry, took a damage there. Doing one, just reading a chat here. Orange took a shield, not red. Well, in the what? chat we had Nihilo asked oh, we uh, have, how uh, many of the Nantex are left in the top eight. And I believe there are four Nantex lists left in the top eight who are all paired up against each other at the moment. There you go. Self-cannibalizing. Real quick, Nick Sperry, let's go ahead and switch. Uh, Orange did not take a shield. Uh, red took a shield on the... Uh, aggressors side. Thank you, fam. Cool. You know, I certainly think though, Philippe definitely got the better side of the uh, engagement here. I think he's in a much stronger position uh, for this turn than um, than Mario. Mario uh, down silencer. Um, he's got green points in the wrong way with that deplete and a weapons failure. Um, Hollow isn't in the best positions to make use of his um, dial. Uh, red's, mm -hmm. red's in a good position, but I really don't like the other two. Uh, and I think definitely now that Fleet has both numbers and with yellow can start to come around the side, <clears throat> so excuse me, uh, with that dorsal turret and can start to circle the wagons and just create kill boxes. I, I, I like that phrase, circle the wagons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Indeed, it's true. When you, you, have the, you have the ability to do that because you have the dorsal turrets available. 
Oh yeah, oh yeah. It just creates. As was Dom and I were talking the other day about uh, the antics with time on target. It just creates that that ability just to just skirt around and just plink, plink, plink. And eventually things will go. And so Dom, you've flown um, the silencer, sorry, the silencer, the um, striker, and the reaper more than I have. Uh, so do you want to take us through what you'd be thinking with Felix movements? Well, uh, I got to hold on one, uh, one second before you answer that question. I got to clear up something because there's there's some confusion. Ruthless is range zero to one of the defender, not of the attacker. So I'm just going to read Ruthless just so that we have it out there. Um, actually, you know what we can do? We can even, even do one better. We can enhance here. Right there, get you guys the card here for a second. So Ruthless says, while you perform an attack, you may choose... Another friendly ship at range zero to one of the defender. All right, all right. So just uh, watch out. Just make sure to read the card text before we get too confused. All right, back to the table. I got you, fam. <laughs> Go ahead. What was what was that? Uh, what was that, dumb? I was just saying that I think um, in this turn, especially with the Reaper and those aggressors, I think you're going to see Philip just try and use utilize the big gun of Feroth as best as he can, just doing a relatively slow blue maneuver forward to clear that stress, get his action, because the as we've already noted, uh, the green silence is facing the wrong way, hollow's in a sticky situation, which can be relatively uh, easily blocked by these aggressors and their choices. Um, so you're just looking at Ferros, not going to take a huge amount of incoming firepower this turn. So I would just try and go in nice and slow, probably a one straight, and get that big gun on target and try and see if you can remove Hollow or remove another ship this turn for sure. Indeed, indeed. It'll be interesting to see how uh, Mario tries to claw this back because I, I think he is in a very poor position at the moment. All right, here we go. We'll get the silencers on the move. So far, being able to take up space, and this is a this is a trap for Hollow, is what this is. You have all those arcs yeah. pointed in. Uh, Hollow's going to have to squeak out uh, in that alley between the orange. Oh man, but Faroff is covering that corner as well. Uh, Hollow, uh, we hardly knew you. I don't I don't know how, I don't know how I was going to get out of this box. And there Ooh, is, did, did it land? It. it landed. Wow. Ooh, okay, so you, you get some tokens here. You get, there's, you're saying there's a chance. But that also means that orange gets to shoot you. And orange is full. <laughs> uh, you got, you got to. Unless you use the ability to barrel out and then boost in to try and get out of the arc and limit it to just Feroth. Uh, red, the, 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 the red aggressor will also have a shot. But you, you can definitely uh, take two shots out of that. Possibly even three if you can get away from yellow as well. Yeah. As we've mentioned, that dorsal turret does only have a range one to two. He could also boost if uh, that would get over orange and may, that would get him out of maybe range of the yellow. Uh, the yellow aggressor. And out of blue's arc. That is an option as well. So it looks like he's taking a deplete to grab that target lock. Seems to be just a minute and iron about his choice. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on where, what action he wants to do after this. That's really going to make that matter. Yep. And of course, again, with that green silencer not going to be in this engagement. He's got a great target to pass that deplete over to. He's going to be doing a blue maneuver next turn to clear that stress, so it would clear the deplete at the same time. Choosing violence here, which is always appreciated. Yep, now we got the target lock out there waiting for the action. Of course, with, with him with him if he does take the boost option which i think is the right choice to mitigate the shots coming in it does mean that Faroff gets that automatic evade because hollow will not have a green token taking the boost forward 
Taking the boost forward, that is for sure range one, and gets out of the orange arc, the blue arc, the yellow arc, and only going to be taking shots from Faroff and the red aggressor. Here we go. Great choice on the boosts, but doesn't have any defensive tokens. Here we go. First shot, range one, hollow into Faroff. And just just like uh, one of you guys just said, Faroff's ability is going to automatically go off. It is a free evade, essentially, because of Faroff's ability. <laughs> it just takes the card there. All right, but you Ooh. know what? When you roll like that, <laughs> three hits and a crit. Uh, minus one, so it's going to be shield, shield, crit. That is, that is a aggressive play. Aggressive play. Yeah, the aggression... Uh... Yeah, the aggression coming out. Uh, isn't it? Uh, I think he did one too many, right? Because he had two shields. He doesn't yeah. take four. Uh, wait. One less card. Yep, so it's not Panic Pilot. Yeah, flip that other one. The real card is... A weapons failure. I don't know which one's worse. <laughs> that, that, that weapons failure is um, is almost a lifesaver for Hollow there. T taking slightly less incoming fire is always good. And here we go. Th only three dice instead of four. Remember, Ruthless is active. He'd probably take a, uh, put a damage onto Orange in order to do to convert, but doesn't need to. He will use the focus. And Hollow's taking three. Ooh. Hollow's oh, down to one. Uh, he got one evade, though. So, uh, oh, he did get one. Yeah. Bad at reading, apparently. The coffee hasn't quite kicked in yet. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> got the half points. You can see that that yellow aggressor is sad. No, no ships in that range to arc. But the okay, interesting choice here. I well, hmm. I actually think I would have gone with orange and blue first. That way, if you could have gotten red, the red uh red silencer like down to one hole or something, you could have taken the one uh, range one shot into the silencer. But here we go, dorsal one hit, and that's gonna go through. Ooh. All right, well sometimes it just works out. One damage on the yeah. hollow. <laughs> But by doing that boost action that we mentioned earlier, they are the only shots Hollow's taken this round. So she is going to survive this turn. Yep. And here is the orange aggressor reaching out to green, seeing if he can clear it off the board. It only has one hole. Spends a focus for two. This silencer doesn't have any defensive tokens, and it is going to take that last damage. Green silencer off the table. Here we go. Now, the final aggressor taking a shot here into the red silencer. Range two, two on three. Will he spend the focus? That's aggressive. Two hits. I mean, he's probably banking on the silencer shooting fair off. That's going to be either one damage or he has to spend the focus. And he is choosing to take it. Shields are down on the red silencer. Yeah, Cho with, chosen to keep that mod for his attack. Yeah, and with, with the other um, signs going down there, he knows he needs to put as much damage to as possible to try and levy the playing field. Because you have Hollow on one and a full health silencer versus, well, uh, well, Hull, the silencer, not even uh, the shields anymore against the world. It's not a pretty position to be in. Yep, uh, imp important to note that the focus did get actually used on Faroff already. I'm not sure if it'll end up being relevant. And not relevant. Hit crit goes through. Blinded pilot. Ooh, okay. So that means the Sloan rerolls have been disabled as well as Ruthless. Because those are both yeah. dice modifiers. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Ferros, uh, 
ability will still work for the evasive, so at least there's still something there, but it's not... I, I still think, though, Philippe will be quite happy with how this has gone so far. He won't be worrying too much about the rerolls at this point, I don't think. A Timo in the chat asking, if Philippe wins the whole Galactic Championship, do we get a Sinar Specialist alt art? It's his choice. It gets to be whatever it is. And I would imagine if, he, if for instance, he won the whole Galactic Championship, if he won Coruscant uh, with, with, a, with a, a, um, an aggressor, he'd probably want an aggressor uh, alt art. Um, yes, of course, the Sloan rerolls still apply to the aggressors out there, specifically speaking about Faroff. Faroff cannot use the rerolls any longer. Yeah, because of it being 0-3, of course, you can uh, use it on yourself, so it turns it off mm -hmm. there, but um, not for everyone else. But so I think Philippe's going to be particularly happy with how this has gone so far. You have Red, uh, the Red Silencer um, is about to get boxed in, and Hollow is on one hole and pointing the wrong way. Uh, it's not looking very pretty at all. Yeah, and the, the aggressors are in a good position here because uh, orange and blue can either just do like a two hard in uh, and keep that dorsal turret active or they can do their K turns here and uh, start lining up for following engagements. Uh, red, again, can just do a two hard. You've got yellow that can also hard turn in and I think he's going to choose to try and get Ferraf away from the action here. Uh, yeah. Nick Sperry, when you have a second, go ahead and take that shield off of uh, the shield off of uh, the red silencer. I do wonder. I do wonder what um, Mara is going to do here with with um, Hollow. Maybe the sloop. Try and bring him back in. He could do because don't forget he still has that proud tradition that we haven't seen yet. So he does have that option to sloop, and still be able to get that focus mod. Okay, and it's going to be taking this. No, no strain, no strain on there. And this that aggressive move there for the red aggressor, I think, is just trying to uh, trying to box in hollow. Yeah, you know, yeah, he wants to try and try and put as much damage in as possible, knowing that hollow is on the back foot and possibly going to be stretched. And, you know, somebody made a great point in the chat earlier. Um, you know, the points being adjusted for X-Wing does do a lot of, you know, it can bring different archetypes in and out of the meta. And with the lowering of the cost for this chassis and dorsal tour, it made it so that this a list like this can even exist, right? And the statement from the chat, well, I forgot who it was, said any number of, like, at a certain point, any number of a certain ship will be good, Right. Like oh, it, uh, sure. it's 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 a great point. It's a great point. And right now, this might be for the first time ever, like in the history of X Wing, that the aggressor is in a in a in an aggressive position. Yeah, I mean the, the twenty eight points apiece with the um, with the dorsal turret there. I mean they are that that is dirt cheap. You can get a lot of them. So he's got um, Philippe's got what was it oh, one two three um, five in this list. Um, sorry, six in this list. There's a lot of guns, a lot of time on target, and a lot of blockers. It's a, a, the chassis isn't the greatest, but anything in great numbers will always have playability. Yeah, and, right. and having these five aggressors with that 180 degree arc each gives them uh, a big time on target and a lot of arcs that someone has to try and get out of. Okay, interesting choice here. After Hollow doing the sloop, can pass off the stress to the Sinar Jameis engineer sitting at range one of three of those aggressors or holds on to it himself. Sloan rerolls are on um, for those aggressors. Where, who, who's going to get the rerolls against them? That's a choice right now. Looks like he's choosing to break the lock 
and uh, and go ahead and not stress the silencer. I think that is the right choice, especially since you're probably only getting shot by fair off at range three and then through the cloud. Here we go. Hollow into fair off. Range three. Proud tradition made it so that hollow has a focus. That's why it was able to perform uh, to get that turret. Excuse me, that token. Yeah. Here we go. Three dice. Got one. Has a target lock out there. Probably yeah, spends it on both of them. The blank and the focus. And same result. One hit. The focus wasn't spent, so that means fair off ability would not go off. No, I think it's has, he, he, he's thinking about leaving, I think. Also, he wants to focus for defense. Yep. Yeah, with only one health left, he, he can't really risk uh, Hollow going down, having no defensive no. odds. But that take blink did go through, though. That one damage did, did go through. <laughs> Absolutely. So right now, that means that fair off is now at two hole after taking that damage. Oh, sorry, three hole because of the hole upgrade. I always miss those. Hull upgrade is out there, so that's why it's at three. And now Faroff is ignoring Hollow, saying, you know what, let's take this red silencer off the board. Gonna be probably shooting all of them into here. This is a weapons failure. Remember, that's why it's only two dice, one hit. Safe. And he's, he's got a range two shot from that red aggressor and three range one shots from the others with those dorsal turrets being pointed towards him as well. Yeah. Here we go. Dorsal turret shots. Range one, three dice coming from the aggressor. That probably spends the focus there for three hits. At least one's going through. Is he going to spend the focus? One. Two. Choosing not to spend a focus here. Interesting. All right. Next ship. Range one, side arc. And hit, hit, crit. <laughs> I mean, I think I think essentially he's holding on to that focus for the Hail Mary, right? Like the three focus roll right there. Hit, yeah. crit goes through, and that's it for the silencer. Yeah, that's him down and out. So he will have yeah. two... Two shots uh, from yellow and red going into hollow now, though. Yep. Here we go. Range three. Two on four. Spends the focus for two. He just needs one to get through. Hollow hoping. He's fine. He's fine. Also should be fine after this cloud. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a two-die shot, but through the cloud with a focus. I mean, it's it's almost impossible for this uh, this to hit. Almost impossible. You got the hit crit, though. Yeah. I, it feels good, but, I mean, the dice will say no. There it is. The cloud gives yeah. the evade from the blank, and we're fine. Yeah. All right, we probably have one to two no, more turns no, left I in this in this game. Writings... Go ahead, take it, take it. Yeah, so unfortunately, I think the writing's on the wall here um, for Mario at this particular point. You're going to have Feroff just do the aileron, uh, no, you know the aileron, so just do a, a one blue bank in. The aggressors will just turn around and just go, "Cool, here's the kill box. Get out of this." Um, and Hollow, he knows he needs to take down Feroff, but his win condition at this point is. In 16 minutes, kill Faroff and kill at least two, if not three, um, aggressors without losing another single point of damage. I, as much as I hate to say it, because I always like to give as much hope as possible, it, it doesn't look good. Yeah, I mean, if I think if, if Hollow had probably, maybe it was full health. You could you could maybe do some work, especially with having proud tradition being able to focus off of the K turns, but um, without having that support ship out there to to pass off that uh, that strain or deplete to really 
limits the amount of options and hollow hollow alone is not as strong as hollow with friends no. for sure for for the ability specifically obviously this list is stronger if there's more more ships out there takes a strain uh off the cloud But no, it's, it's something that I noticed yesterday and applauded Philippe for was his patience uh, with the aggressors here by setting them up, getting the shots he wanted and picking his targets carefully has rewarded him with what is essentially a extremely good end game here. Yeah, he's been able to set up these kill boxes time and time again. Uh, even with the uh, uh, silencers moving first, he's either just accepted the blocks uh, with the rerolls from Sloan to help do the damage or well, he's managed to avoid a lot of blocks as well. And um, this is where we see Hollow in a really just unhappy place. Yeah, I mean, uh, there was nowhere else for Hollow really to go. Uh, I mean, you could try running for a while, but being behind on points with only 14 minutes left, you weren't going to get much there. No. No. All right, what are the, what's the call for the action? It looks like taking a strain to target lock uh, okay. and say you know what choosing violence here yeah i think he's, he's just decided that he's gonna hell mary choose violence try and see if he can take fair off down before hollow bites the dust to the aggressors yeah, that's right that listen <laughs> i love it i love it big punch into fair off here it's like, I, listen, I got tokens. I got all the tokens. Let's go. Four dice. Here we go. And spending the focus makes it two hits, two crits. That single evade that Faroff will end up getting does not matter. Spend it. Spend it, my friend. Spend it. He choose from the lock, though, interestingly. Oh, okay. He's going. He's, this is this is going for another. This is low percentage, but I, I like it. He's going for the hope, saying, what if I could kill him have the focus for defense and survive yep. spending the lock got hit crit crit and uh yep. he fair off will actually have to roll for this he got the evade takes two crits though yeah he has one hole left uh, because of the hole upgrade yes the hollow was supposed to shoot with him no the hole upgrade yes yeah you're right hole reach fairly irrelevant at this moment and damage engine so on fire but not quite dead and that's what matters yeah yep, still alive <laughs> see <laughs> i wonder let's see i'm curious to see if he'll actually shoot with fair off because you don't have any mods there uh you well, could just it looks like he got rid of the blinded pilot in his turn so he's still weapons failure but his action last turn was to clear the blinded pilot all right fantastic so, oh, there. Oh, oh. Reroll? No, oh, Ruthless, baby. Nice. There you go. Just going yeah. straight into Ruthless. Ruthless. That'll... Which guarantees that, the kill. Because exactly. Because of the strain hollow. Yep. And goes out in a blaze of glory. Two yeah. evades. Major explosion. You know what? I, I do want to say... <laughs> Congrats to Philippe, of course, taking these aggressors now into the top four, into the top four uh, of the Dathomir Galactic Championship qualifier. But also, uh, big ups to Mario for fighting hard. He had a, uh, you know, he had a, <laughs> he had a lot of uh, a lot of challenges in there with the number of ships he had to deal with. But I think it was it was well played and choosing to go out uh, go out big in this uh, ending was absolutely awesome. Uh, before we end this round, let's remind the people where they can find uh, more stuff about the Fire Squad. Yeah, neat. So you can find us on uh, Facebook, uh, on YouTube, and on Twitch. Just search the Firestorm Squadron Firecast. We stream every other Friday. So uh, we streamed... Uh, we're going to be streaming this coming Friday. Uh, our next uh, scheduled one. Uh, we also do cover events around the country as well, so hopefully now that things are starting to... Oh. Quarter Firecast at 8 o'clock on, uh, on Twitch. Awesome.